Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's Talkie Box, fresh, never frozen. It's true. Yeah, we just make it fresh. What are you doing? Huh? Fresh. <laughs> He's being fresh. Yeah. No. No, I was, it's not. Um, I was using nonverbal communication. Yeah? To say that you were disgusted by the people watching? Um, I don't know. That's the face you were giving off. I don't really know what face I was <laughs> making, legitimately. I was just trying to, like, uh, cycle through a bunch of... Uh, Micro corrections, <laughs> mm -hmm. and just try to make as many faces as possible oh, in a short amount of time. But you were saying something about our beef. Yeah, that was fresh and never frozen. Oh, that's good. Yeah, because you know, um, freezing it, I don't really know what it does to it. It, it makes it colder. It makes it colder. Yep. Uh, the water inside expands. I know that. Mm -hmm. Like yep. it, it creates big old gaps in your meat. Right. Gappy meat. Is that what you want? <laughs> no. Is that what, no. That's why you keep it fucking fresh, yo. <laughs> yep. Gapped up meat. Uh, that's Jason making faces at the camera. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I was listening, though. Yeah, yeah. I'm Dave, and this is Justin. Hey. I remember last week that we didn't actually do introductions. No. So no anybody clue. who just listens to the podcast, no clue who we are. Uh, we do have Mickey back with us today. Mickey. Hello. You came through so clear having not actually been next to your microphone. I'm good like that. That's a great microphone. <laughs> Yeah, yep. yep. I haven't I haven't dropped it either. So. Yeah, our, our yeah. guest. We always keep our our best stuff in reserve for our guests. Yes. Yep. yep. Be our. You know what? I think that's copyrighted. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. Yeah. Do I not think you can get with the diz. I think you can get <laughs> six seconds for free, but yeah, let's not push it. I'm, not, I'm not pushing it. You got, yeah. I think One day get, we're gonna have to look up these things so we actually know. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's time or if it's actual measure. I don't know. Again, we'll one day look it up. Probably not today. Yeah. No. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe once today. our lawyers tell yeah. us to. Yep. It's yeah. a way to kill an episode, though. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, have you guys seen the Saraha thing on uh, Facebook? Saraha? I don't, I don't know if that's how you actually say it. but it's, no, I always thought no it was clue. Sarah Ah. Yeah, it could be Sarah Ah. Sarah Ah? I thought, I know, I thought it was Sahara. So maybe it is. Sahara? The anonymous messenger thing. Yeah, yeah I've seen it. Not, have you not seen this? No, I have no clue. Yeah, so it's basically this thing where... Um, you you go to Saraha or whatever dot com and you put in some information. You're just basically your name and email address, and then you send out the link that it gives you to people. You can put it on Facebook or whatever, and then people can go there and send anonymous messages to you, just telling you, you know, either telling you things that they would not say to your face, or telling you things just to get you to try to figure out who said it. Okay. And so it's an interesting. Have you have you done any of this? I did. Uh, so. Jason didn't do this. I know that he didn't do this. Um, in fact, when I first saw it, I thought, this would be a great thing to talk about on Talkie Box, but Jason's not going to do it. In fact, Jason's going to make a point to tell people that he's not going to do it. And that's exactly what he did. He made a post on Facebook saying that he wasn't going to do it. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of cowardice. Right. Uh, of course. Uh, I, like, <laughs> I like balls deep. Yeah, <laughs> that is what we've all heard of you, about you. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I did balls make deep. one. In interest of the show. And then as, as I'm making it, I go, Jason's going to comment on the Facebook post and not actually on the thing. And he's going to mention my hair. And then he did those things too. I am predictable, <laughs> if not lovable. What? Was, what? was that a word? Well, lovable? Well, you, lovable? I might have used three Bs in that word. Lovable. Lovable. Yeah. Lovable. So yeah, I did it. And I got like five responses. And one of them was like, from a friend, just an inside joke thing. I'm madly in love with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one was about a character I played, Exodune. One was uh, um, just some weird philosophical thing. Remember I, that time our penises touched? Yeah, that, that's exactly <laughs> what it was. You did make one! <laughs> um, <laughs> Philosophy. Uh, I have it here. Oh, someone told me I have a sultry baritone. They've obviously heard me sing. Um, not for long, though. Or maybe um, they're a fan of Talkie Box, where you get to use your sultry baritone. That could be it. That sultry baritone yeah. of yours. But then I got one that was that <clears throat> made me feel odd. It said, uh, "I always feel inferior near you. You are always the coolest person in the room, and make me feel like I'm three inches tall." Now I'm not even the coolest person in this room. So What's up, guys, yeah, it's Mickey. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what that's <laughs> about. But I, I, ha I kind of hate that I make someone feel that way. That's yeah, that definitely. I, uh, it's, you can't have that Eye be a reflection of you. That's supposed to be an esteem builder for you, even though obviously whoever sent that has a lot of issues right. within their their well, self. That's one. I don't. I don't know if they're saying 
you're the coolest person around and I don't feel that cool around you or I you make me feel right. like I'm not as cool as right. you. Like the way I take it is you are so stellar mm. that it makes me feel inferior around you right. as in like I'm complimenting you while also shorting myself. It's just it's not a healthy yeah um outlet but but still right it's it is a nice thing to say about someone they obviously think very highly of yeah you. Hey, and and if you're watching hang out with me you'll find out how cool i am not very i mean as far as like the actual def- definition of cool like you're no chester cheetah nope. but but as far he as like fictional. being much closer to all right like Joe. don't Joe. go there okay but <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about chester like that <laughs> So he's but, like, if he wants to defend himself, he, but your your coolness Lines doesn't come open. from like trend setting. Your coolness comes from your no giving a fuck. I'm all about that. You you are the yeah. epitome <laughs> of no fucks given here. Yeah, and so many people are driven by anxiety and driven by like worry. Right, that your ability to just kind of let all that stuff just wash over you and move through it. <laughs> Is amazing. It's yeah. an amazing gift that you have. Like I think apathy. The f- that's, <laughs> <an amazing gift. laughs> that's your that's your gift. <laughs> to an ex- yes, apathy for the right thing. Yeah. Like not not sweating the small stuff. Right. Like that kind of thing. You know. Like and you're willing to be friends with anybody. Like I've never seen you not give somebody a shot. Yeah. To be cool. The moment they're not cool, you're gonna call them out and probably <laughs> avoid them from that point on. And that's the only part of the post that I that I didn't like. Like. Uh, that you make someone else feel inferior. Mm. Um, I'm a firm believer in the inco- the economy of cool, right. and that, that the amount of cool is infinitesimal. Uh, and I would guess that's probably probably a gamer, uh, probably an ex. Maybe yeah. Uh, I would assume. Yeah, could be. Uh, and that's it's e- the- I mean, it's either that or somebody from work. I don't know. But but either way, uh, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. That's that's what I don't like about the <laughs> Sahara true, yeah. thing. You know what I mean? It, yeah. It's it's nice to hear. Uh, but if there is an issue, even if it's a, a minute one or whatever, then you still can't address it, right? Unless they reach out to you directly. And and I and I understand Jason's point of view on the whole thing, and and even what you just said. Like I, I get not being. I I actually liked it more for the, uh, the kind of anonymous who's this kind of thing, you know, like someone like one one of the the very first one I like got make a was, game was clear. It. Yeah, was clearly from uh, our friend Fabian. Because of this inside joke that he and I have had for a year or so, and one of the the first talkie boxers and a true believer in shower beer. This oh, is, Fabian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever since shower you've been, beer, you, you brought up shower beers. <laughs> this dude, actually, he's God bless his heart. He's been uh, sober now, right? Yeah, healthily sober now for like over thirty a month. days. Yeah, uh, but. Before then, right. he really enjoyed himself a nice shower. I'm not beer. sure how I feel about that now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's but, still really good at it. He's just in a point where yeah, where he needs to take a break from it. I get I'm, it. I'm super proud of him. Shout out to Fabian. Hell yeah, yeah, hell yeah. It's important. Like you can't let something define you. you yeah, know? except for his beard. Can... I feel like his beard could define him. Like that's a good beard. He's got a nice beard, man. It is a good beard. He's put a lot of time into it. It's like Dave's hair. Dave doesn't put the way to stroke my headphones. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was for you. Thanks. That was just for you. Did yeah. it feel good? Yeah, yeah. Good. So Jason didn't do one. You haven't even heard of it. Never so, heard of it. Mickey, did you did you make one of these? No, I don't. I don't care about people's <laughs> opinion of me. So how do you spell this thing? What is this it's, called? It's, let me let me bring it up yes, again. Yes, please. Uh, I believe it's S A H A R A H A H. Oh well, then I spelled it right the first time. Yeah. How about that? Simple. <laughs> now, doesn't that spell Sarah Ah? Yep. Or, or Sarah, Sarah ha, ha, depending on yeah, Sarah depending on how you spelling Sarah. Sarah Ha. Yep. I love that stuff. Delicious. Yeah, the 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 one philosophical, <laughs> which is, yeah, which I put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Um, You're lovable. Pursue your dreams. Pursuit your dreams without abandon. You're brilliant. Oh. Wait, what? What did you? I'm sorry. Pursue your dreams without <laughs> abandon. You're brilliant. Yep. It sounds like something you get in like a fortune cookie, especially with the, the misspelling of yeah. pursuit. <laughs> I wonder if that was intentional. <laughs> I don't know. It was that feel- talkie box feedback? No. That was on your Saraha? That was on my Saraha. 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 Yeah. Well, maybe people are telling you, you know. We should do one for talkie box. Keep, 
keep talkie box going. Oh yeah, we could. I yeah. can make that happen. We'll do that for next week. I mean, we no, can't. No one will post. Yeah, I was gonna say we can't get people <laughs> to just post like, "Hey, great job." Or, yeah. You know what I'd like to see? More titties. Like, <laughs> well, sorry. I know mean, we Mickey's might gonna help. Yeah. Mickey's willing. Yeah. And able. I don't know. We're getting a few comments and stuff on YouTube. Uh, there was someone who did not like you, by the way. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And it what wasn't even say? anonymous. I really need to know this. It was. They said something about. It was from last week's episode where you were in the the, the pink tank top. Yeah. And it was something like that guy in the pink shirt uh, is stupid or I don't know. It was. It was not a well thought out comment. So and it someone, wasn't. It wasn't even me saying it. So. <laughs> so someone didn't put a lot of intelligent thought uh-huh. into telling me that I was stupid. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Are you I'm looking gonna, it up? I, I'm, I'm looking it you up. You gotta know, don't you? I, I have to know. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm completely okay. I with think that. it's on this one. I it's think it's on, on the 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 dog sauce clip. I'd like to thank that person for watching. Yeah, actually, is there? The guy in the pink sando is as dumb as it can get. There you go. All right. Well. <laughs> I don't think that that guy understands how dumb it can get, <laughs> or that lady. Yeah, we, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Challenge Vi- Vi- accepted. <laughs> Viro Ben, we appreciate your feedback. He has eight hundred and forty-six subscribers. Uh, so that's more than us. Somebody oh, wow. gives yeah. gives a shit about what he has to say, <laughs> right? Maybe we should subscribe, and then tell him he's got a small penis. <laughs> If you want, we can do it. You've got the smallest penis of all the podcasters I've ever seen. Is it even a podcast? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I have no clue. Yeah. I, uh, I'm actually just shit-talking a rando. I yeah. have no idea who this person is. I am actually glad they watch. You're, you're actually doing the Saraha thing right now. I hope <laughs> that they um, tell all their friends what a stupid ass I am <laughs> and that I they should watch Talkie Box. Watch to Talkie see Box. how stupid ass you are. And every episode, I promise... To try and be just a little more stupid or assy. <laughs> well, we, we did get some other comments here, and I do like, I just got fascinated. I started digging in. Yeah. So, uh, uh, one, somebody said, hey, Talkie Box, I think you're great. Uh-huh. And then uh, invited us to their Instagram page. Oh, good. And then we had somebody who said, uh, your clock doesn't work. Maybe if it works, you'll not be surprised when you're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so, they are paying attention, which we really appreciate. Yeah. I can't tell you. Uh, yeah, let, I think we were what at like ten minutes. So we'll we'll just let's just keep we'll, moving it we'll over. Just, yeah, we'll we'll keep time of it for us. How about that? Time is fluid. Yeah. Is. With the talkie box clock <laughs> available at talkiebox.net. Hey, you got the website right. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I have no excuses now. <laughs> no. Here's something. Since we are on the topic of talkie box, uh-huh. I kind of like to talk about. Boxing? The, the future oh. of uh, our our production work okay. and sort of like where we'd like to branch out from here. Uh, clothing line. You, you want to start a and clothing then, line? And then a liquor store. Uh, oh, all yeah. right. See, now yeah. liquor store is guaranteed. Yeah. That's a real... If you can get... Liquor box. If you can get uh, the zoning and, and you know, all <laughs> the, the proper taxes paid and right. everything to get a liquor store... I think we could really move some product. And then and then a strip club next to the liquor store. Okay. All right. So you're basically just going to get out of the called, whole... Called Boxy Box. Communication we'll have a, thing. We'll, well, we'll, have a, we'll have an insult comedy lounge called uh-huh. Snarky Box. Yep. That sounds good. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, obviously, <laughs> Talkie Box has no future, so we'll move, <laughs> we'll move on to something else. No, we do. We have plans. We have we have, uh, we have do a Chew Cover Kid that we've been doing, uh, which the voting for that closes... Today, which now. you won't see this video for like a couple days, so I didn't tell you anything. For all intents uh, and purposes, you're too late. Yeah, you too. If you haven't already voted, there's another episode coming. Ha, I'm the only one that still gets to vote. <laughs> that's that's the moral of that story. Yeah. So what you're saying is you haven't voted yet. No, that's that's what I'm wait saying. Wait till yeah. the very yeah, end. That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm a procrastinator. Uh, we have other things in work. We have other videos in the works. We have to write things down. At some, we'll do that. Right? Yeah. All right, there you go. And uh, I don't know. What else we got going? We got Talkie Box Olympics coming up next year. 
We sure do. And I know people think that's a joke that we're like. I fully intend to do some talk about. I, I'm Absolutely. playing some, some kickball. We we do have we do have uh, some uh, guerrilla marketing uh-huh. in plans for the future. Yep. Very near future, some guerrilla marketing. Yeah, we're going to uh, market more on a that to come. Yeah, yeah. we've market got a, on a gorilla. We, we need more exposure for this. Uh, and I know you've been wanting to get into advertising. Yeah. So I feel like it would be. We also need gorillas. And then, and then an ad agency open up down the street. Oh, really? Yep. In an old church. Hmm. That church that burnt down that one time? Oh, Google Church. Yeah. <laughs> That's an ad agency. Yeah. It, well, it's a marketing firm, but yeah. That, it all makes sense. Yeah. They burnt down a church to make a marketing firm. Of course. I can't confirm or deny that rumor, but you can spread that like wildfire. Spread it. Sing it from the mountaintops. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was a pun intended there? What? Because they burnt down the church. And, and you said spread, spread it like, it like wildfire. wildfire. Nope. Was that, was that All right, cool. You know I don't do puns, man. I mean, you do. No. You just might not be aware of it. No, <laughs> don't do it. Puns, the lowest form of comedy. Write that down. Write that down. You I think fart jokes. Nope. <laughs> 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 I mean, those aren't those aren't good either. Are there are there fart jokes or is it like I farted and that's the joke? I think I farted and that's the joke. Oh. Mm. Unless you shit your pants. <laughs> In which case, that's the punchline. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And everybody knows the shit your pants rule, right? You you only get one a month. You get one a month. One a month. One a month to shit your pants. No rollover. It, no, it no, does it, not, not roll over. So yeah. listen, we, we, we missed our shot. At least as far as I know, I did. Yeah. I did not shit my pants in July. I that came real close. doesn't mean that I get two in August. No. It, the clock resets. Uh-huh. I'm allowed to shit my pants one time this month. Mm-hmm. And the, your unless, best bet is to save it till the end. Unless you're on vacation, and then you get unlimited pants shitting. You do get unlimited. Yeah. But only if you're drinking. That's an important distinction. Uh, I didn't know I had this many opportunities to shit my pants. I've yeah. only shit my pants twice in my adult life. Really? Man, I'm, you have I'm been way behind. Wasta- no, I mean, it's not something you feel like you got to be behind on. Yeah. Just think of it as like coupons you haven't cashed in. Yeah. Like... It's not like you lost anything, but at the same time, you didn't take full advantage of your circumstance. Right. So, perfect example of toilet humor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. You, you know, knock and that was still better than puns. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard some really good puns. No, you haven't. You've I heard have. some puns. I've heard some good ones. I have. I can't think of any right now, but they exist. <laughs> They're out there, mostly in meme form. No. Yes. Uh, so how's your week going? Not bad. Yeah. I uh, I've been playing some games. I've been watching the uh, the new Ozarks. On, I haven't watched that yet on the Netflix, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of brings me to my topic. I'd like to discuss anti heroes. I thought you were about Ooh. to say Anthrax. I want to discuss Anthrax. Okay, both the metal <laughs> band and the uh, the powdered poison. Right. Uh, one That's is enough bad. of that. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, anti heroes. Anti heroes. Uh huh. You know, you've got your Breaking Bad. Right. Uh, you've got your Sons of Anarchy. Uh huh. Uh, you've got your Ozarks. Um, you got your Robin Hood. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of Riddick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, a lot of anti heroes out there, and I, I feel guess like it's technically uh, the crew of Serenity from Firefly. I mean, that's reaching. They're criminals. Yeah, but I mean, like that's reaching as far as reference material goes. There's there's probably like a thousand. Of of those sorts of we can just keep on naming things. I mean, we could, but then we'd never get to the whole like point of oh, okay anti heroes <laughs> coming back into the mainstream. Okay, and how Americans and and other people that watch American influenced media are latching on to these the humanization of criminals, mm-hmm. like showing people that like sometimes you know criminals don't really have the worst of intentions and the worst of designs. Right. Like a lot of it is just happenstance or or just a run of bad, you know, lemony snickets <laughs> all coming together at one time. Yeah. And so a lot of these shows they get a lot of flack because there's people that are like, oh, you're making it easier for our children to Right, you're you're glorifying make all these amphetamines. Yeah. You're making it easier for our children to join a biker gang and and be racist. Like but I really feel like it's more about the art showing, like, the humanity, the, of... the humanity uh, and the truth behind these things that we see 
and have been led to believe are so very black and white. Right. Uh, and so I just kind of wanted to think, you know, what are y'all's opinions? Have y'all seen any of these shows? I know everybody's seen a version of Robin Hood. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't think of a human being who doesn't love Robin Hood. Come on, the Merry uh, Men. I was going to say the sheriff does not love Robin Hood. The, yeah, the sheriff does not. Yeah, the sheriff not him. King John, also not a fan. Yeah, but, you know, they're dead. Prince, that was Prince John. Prince John. Pardon yeah. me. Prince John. King Richard, love Robin Hood. Big fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Robin Hood and Little John run into the forest. That was probably my favorite version of Robin Hood. Disney is, will take is the us. Disney, <laughs> the Disney version with the foxes. Mm-hmm. I, I love the part where he kisses the rings and he sucks like all sucks, the jewels yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the rings. That's my favorite part. <laughs> Snake balloon. And then, he, and then he smiles and he's got all the gems right. in his teeth. My favorite part is definitely Snake Balloon. Where the oh, yeah. Just, like, just blowing and he's traveling and then he does his tail as a little propeller. Yeah. <laughs> that was probably my favorite character in the show. Yep. But, you know, and and from that, like, everybody's always had that, like, oh, rob from the rich, give to the poor. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's an acceptable social standard, thanks to Robin Hood. Steal like, from the everybody. Rich and give to the needy. And, and so yeah. everybody. I, I don't know. Did you have something that you wanted to <laughs> No, add? I just wanted to keep interrupting you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done. Oh. Yeah. That makes for less interruptions. Did you have like what 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 were you trying to get to with this? Well, I was just trying to get some feedback, some opinions. I was trying to bring up a topic uh, that uh, is sort of do you have somewhat transcendent, and you guys aren't having it. So now I'm a, just gonna sit here and I'm gonna wait for y'all to talk. Do you have a favorite antihero? I totally have a favorite antihero. Uh I mean, I I really do love what they did with uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, Breaking Bad, uh, Vince Gilligan, and like all of the writing that they did. It just felt so real and it, it felt like I, I don't know it, it, it gave a lot of perspective mm. uh, see I, I never finished Breaking Bad um, really? I, I, I really did I didn't finish the I got to like um, I got to the last season and it started uh, it's, I started falling off I really liked the interactions between uh, Walter White's genius level mind and then Captain Cook I love Captain that was, that was the best name ever mm-hmm. uh and just like, I love those little moments where he gets to to my favorite moment is probably uh yeah bitch magnet, when he uh, destroys all the evidence in the police room with a magnet. And that was also my favorite. That was also my favorite <laughs> bitch moment for him too because he's got a list. Uh, followed by Gatorade me bitch. Definitely, it's number two. I do have a top five bitch list from the show. Well, that's, uh, that's good. That's really my good. my favorite antihero, especially from the from the list of examples you give would be uh, Clay from Sons of Anarchy. Because uh, he's, got, he's got a pretty good story arc, you know what I mean? He kind of starts as the anti-hero, then goes to the villain, and you want him to die so bad, but when he did, when he finally comes to the point where he looks like that's going to happen, spoilers, right? The show's <laughs> been off the air for a few years now. Uh, and he dies, you get to see the redemption arc, and you're like, okay, so he did have a lot of hero aspects, and you can who, see. Now, I haven't seen Sons of Anarchy, like, not any of it, so who who plays Clay? Uh, Hellboy, yeah. what's his name? Oh, Ron uh, Perlman. Ron yeah. Perlman, yeah, okay, gotcha. I, I, I'm sure I would enjoy both those, like, I've, I've seen, like, a few episodes of Breaking Bad, I haven't seen any Sons of Anarchy, they're both on my list on Netflix, I just have not watched them yet. Yeah. Um, I'm on Xbox like every day, mm-hmm. and I see you are on Netflix every night when you get home. Do you watch like five minutes and pass out? Is that what it is? No, like I watch I watch a bunch of different shows and and movies and stuff on Netflix. Because every time we bring something up, you ain't seen it, right? Yep. So you must watch a bunch of different shows. Yeah, he watches a bunch of different yeah. We clearly different don't watch shows. all the same things. Clearly, now see, I like I like the comedic antiheroes as well, like the ones that are clearly the antagonist, but they, they, they have their moments, and it's all in fun, like uh, Jeremy Jam on uh, Parks and Rec. Okay. Uh, he's kind of, he kind of takes on that anti-hero role. Like, you don't really care for him, but yeah. you enjoy having him around. Like, you like when he's on the screen. <laughs> well, anti-hero is generally a protagonist of a piece. Uh, whereas, well, he has protagonist moments. Whereas <laughs> J- Jam's is very antagonizing. He has his protagonist moments, though. Certain but- episodes... Uh, possibly, yeah. I, I'm actually rewatching uh, Parks and Rec. Are you? It's uh, very good. And I'm on like season five or something. But currently, I haven't seen 
uh, any of those any of those episodes where he's a hero. Now there has been a show that I've been watching lately. It's not on Netflix. Mm. Um, I did not realize how entertaining it would be until I found out, uh, unless Hulu's lying to me, but Hulu told me that this show got nominated for an Emmy. Emmy an Emmy? An Emmy. <laughs> for an Emmy. Uh, Drunk History. Have you watched this show? Oh, yeah. Drunk History, nominated for an Emmy. Really funny show. It's an incredibly funny show. And also slightly educational. To a point. To a degree. Yeah, yeah. Have it, you, it, have it have you seen curiosity. This? I've not. No. I watched yeah. several episodes yesterday at Justin's while okay. I was prepping for this part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, really fun. I, I watched the first, I think, two seasons all the way through, and I've caught clips here and there. Uh, but it's, it's I've really enjoyed it. Um, and you're right. It, there, there are definitely things I did not know about a great deal of history, it turns out. Yes. Um, now, we, we learned it through a lot of shits and fucks and bleeps, <laughs> right. but it's it's still really, really And funny. some exaggerations. <laughs> very, very good exaggeration. Yeah. I think, honestly, one of my favorite parts of the show, the, my favorite aspects, is the way that the actors who are doing the reenacting mm -hmm. are, like, mimicking these people, like, to, like lip syncing oh, yeah. to, a, to a perfect point. Yeah. Where, <laughs> I don't know, it's just very comedic to watch... You know, some of these high profile actors right. just spouting off nonsense. Oh, and it's just coming funny. from somebody else's mouth, but it's just drunken nonsense and they're yeah. just mouthing right along. It's and hilarious. some of the some of the actors they have doing the the speaking, it's very surprising to see them on like Paget Brewster is one of the, has been on there several times. Mm -hmm. She's on uh Criminal Minds is where I where I really know her from, playing a very dramatic role. And then to see her drunk off her ass and then just saying like talking about these these history things it's hysterical. Is, it's incredibly funny <laughs> and then the amount of actors that they get to be on this show like big name actors yeah you like, had like laura dern yeah josh hartnett aubrey jack Pop, black jack like, black and kyle gas to this yeah. bit like, it's good it's it's really um the 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 creators uh, or the host rather Derek mm -hmm. Waters like he typically gets involved in yeah, the yeah. Uh, in the reenactments and Jason noted something while we were watching yesterday and that is he he typically gets really close to the storytellers over the over the course of the because he's episodes. drinking the host oh, drinks yeah, yeah. with them and so like as the the storyline progresses and you go back to like them telling the story right. rather than the actors. You just notice that the host migrates, <laughs> and they like eventually they're both on the floor, like in a pile yeah. or something, <laughs> just being drunk together. Yeah, just being, yep, just drunk, being together. drunk. So many times the storytellers continue telling the story from their stomach or their back on the floor. Oh yeah, it's brilliantly done. Mm -hmm. yep. And I feel like they kind of get flash drunk too. Like I don't oh. think it's like sort of like a long slow all day buzz i kind of feel like it's all right we're here help us set up the equipment all right here's shots. a bottle <laughs> shots 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 <laughs> like 20 minutes goes by and you're like oh god all I'm, right tell me about i'm sweating Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> like all right last of the mohicans go <laughs> i did just get an idea of where we could go with talkie box guys. oh yeah okay drunky box drunky box yeah <laughs> drunky box does sound like fun justin brought this up actually yesterday while we were watching like we should all get hammered and just do the show. That, that'd be a good idea. I, I, maybe the, towards one of the next drinking holidays. You guys holidays. aren't doing that yet? Not yet. Oh. One of those drinking holidays where... Right, like Arbor Day? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one. And we just get really plastered and yeah. do the show as we normally do. See now, how well here, it goes. Here's the idea I had when you mentioned that is is it's me getting drunk trying to remember what we talked about on the, on the current show. Because I, I don't. No. <laughs> I can't even tell you what we've, what we've been talking about up to this point. No. Imagine if I were drunk. Anti-heroes. Anti-heroes. Well, it's a good thing Mickey's here to tell us what we talked about. Good thing. Topics of the night. Anti-heroes. And uh, Jason is an asshole when he's wearing pink tank tops. Yep. And, and, you only, <laughs> and you only get one time a month to shit your pants. I'm kind of dumb and I'm kind of an asshole all the time. I don't know why that guy hates the pink tank top. Like, I think it's a classy I mean, shirt. He didn't say anything about the pink tank top except that you were the one wearing it. Right, yeah. It's as dumb as it can get. And as, me. as I mentioned, we didn't we didn't introduce ourselves on that episode. Oh. Is as dumb as it can get. <laughs> Quote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what's your plans for the weekend? Working? Working. Working. Oh, yeah. Vampire the Masquerade. I am? 
No, that's the uh, that's the. Do you do other LARPs besides X Demon Vampire, or is it just Vampire, or uh, just those two? I do. I'm part of uh, the Mind's Eye Society. Oh, um, they... it is a a fan group based off of uh, By Night Studios, and you know we're connected with with White Wolf Games. Okay. Uh, and the current games that I play um, are Vampire the Masquerade, uh, Werewolf. Uh, they are going to do a space game which is going to be all new world of darkness stuff mm-hmm. uh and just like a zoo game people will be playing like mages some people play werewolves and vampires oh a zoo uh, you, you said zoo game like we call okay. it a zoo game because you can play all the games kind of okay rolled into one okay gotcha like, right. i'm a tiger <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's where my mind come went. see me in my enclosure <laughs> rare <laughs> So that's that's this weekend. That's okay. the that's the the first weekend is usually the the big game weekend for our local MES. And then we'll MES Mind's Eye Society. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. Um, now, Vampire. We we've talked a lot about X Dune and, and like Bar for Larps. We haven't gotten real in depth into Salon Larps, have we? A little. I think we talked about it a little bit, but Maybe. like that's that's what Vampire is. Maybe like yeah, it's briefly. it's it's uh, almost entirely role playing. No combat, really. Like. The the combat takes a different form uh, in Vampire the Masquerade, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, it becomes more more social PvP and Machiavellian style politics, right. where you have the elders who are ancient vampires, but they're concerned about the night to night aspect of it, mm-hmm. as far as what are the elders doing? Are they sticking their fingers in my pie and all that neat stuff? And then you have that sounds evasive. Yeah, it does. Uh, keep your hands out of my. And then you have place. werewolf, where werewolf is more, more plot heavy, mm-hmm. in the fact that you're all, essentially soldiers for Gaia, um, like and there's the spirit of the earth. The spirit of the earth, yeah. Okay. And then you have uh, in this new werewolf, they have uh, different types of shifters, and they call them Farah. So you have the political drama where some are saying that you know we need to let the other, change shears. Help us help Gaia, and then the werewolves. You have different factions. Some are like, no, Team Wolf, and okay. so you get you get some of the political drama, but it's a very different uh, feel, mm-hmm. like than than your Boffer Larps. Uh, so, like, how does how does combat actually go? Like, if if two people want to to fight each other, how does that work? So we would we have we have our character sheets, uh-huh. um, and then we have stats. So if we're if we're you have the highest of your physical or mental sh- sh- uh, is going to be your, plus a bunch of other stats. It's going to be your initiative. Okay. Uh, and then we get down to the attack. I if I go first, mm-hmm. I will declare my attack, uh, and then I will bid traits, and I will we will both flip over a rock paper scissors card, or we can throw rock paper scissors. Okay. Uh, and then you add your your stats that are on your character sheet, and you try to be descriptive with the attack and what you're doing, but okay. you, you narrate it. Right. Um, so you don't. It, it's fun, but it doesn't have the the same feel, the same investment, in my opinion, mm. as as a boffer larp. Okay. Um, I thoroughly enjoy the immersion. I feel like you can get more immersed right in a boffer larp than you can in a salon larp, and that's not to discredit any of my my salon larpers. Right. Well, that's cool. Is it, that, that your vampire? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <That's> a <laughs> <laughs> it's a free character. You'll see that right later, there. guys, or before this video. I don't know. Yeah, that's we'll that's see. great. You definitely need to need to add that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tag some. The vampire has no nose. Let me ask people. No, it does not have a nose. Oh, we lose that in a free it's vampire a, it's, attack. It's a nose for Atu instead of an Oz for Atu. <laughs> that was a pun. No, you don't have to. It's it's no, done no, now. No, yeah, no. he ignored you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little Voldemort, a little Voldemort nose. There you mm. go. Well, we can't just drop that name all willy nilly. I think you can. I think yeah. it's. I think it's. Uh, Is it a copywritten name? I don't know. Well, no, I but I mean, he's like he who must not be named. But he's I thought the he dark lord. didn't he get dead. beaten. But I mean, he could make it back. Are we sure? I mean, she wants more money. <laughs> oh. oh, then he could make it back. <laughs> he, yeah. could, he, he could totally definitely make it, make it back. Or like have a kid. We don't know about. Right. You know. <laughs> little, little I mean, DJ. it was. Tw- I mean, I mean, I think technically it ended like twenty years ago. So. Yeah, that's that's something. Happened. Well, you know, Ron's probably gonna have I, like thirty kids. One of them's gonna mess <laughs> something up. When I was reading the books and watching the movies, 
I did not realize until after I'd finished everything that they weren't taking place like now. They were like in the 90s. Yeah, it was 1998, I think, is when he defeated Voldemort or whatever. Yeah. I, I had no idea. And and I guess it makes sense because there were times where I was like, why don't they just call somebody on a cell phone? Like, oh, because they don't, that's not a thing. Not a big thing. Nope. But it was it was mainly production gaps because you know when you're writing a story mm. you don't write in like two years of time to right. produce a movie from that's a sequel yeah, to yeah. the last movie. So but I mean, with the books it doesn't. I don't I don't recall it actually mentioning a date in the books. But it the, didn't until the very end when you saw the the gravestone. Oh really? Yep. Okay, yeah. But yeah, in the books it, it each each book takes place over the course of a year, and I think she wrote one a year. I think, take. I think she started writing one a year until they started doing the movies, and then it started slowing down. Oh, okay. I believe. Also, the books started getting a lot bigger. So, but I had a, a little game I was thinking about playing. Yeah. Uh, my friend Ethan. Well, some of our our friend Ethan. Uh, I'll claim it. I'll claim it. Yeah. He yeah. Uh, he was. What at he's the trying house. to say is not my friend. Not Ethan. Justin's yeah. friend. Justin Ethan. doesn't know Ethan. Uh, he was at the house the other day, and he was showing me. This kind of a podcast. It was basically uh, these four comedians. They take turns sitting down at a table mm -hmm. and they tell jokes back and forth to each other and they try and make the other guy laugh. And so it's just one joke and like you try and see if, you know, they'll laugh at it. If not, they tell their joke and just sort of just go back and gotcha. forth. You win points by getting the other person to break down and laugh. And they can, they can actually. If they laugh at their own jokes, it counts, like, for your team. So like, so if I laugh at my joke, I get points? No, you give me a point. Oh, okay, Every okay. time you laugh, got it, got it, whether it. it's my joke or your joke, yeah, yeah. I get a point. Okay. Uh, so I was actually <laughs> considering that, you know, since you you know probably wouldn't really want to take part in that, we could <laughs> just try and make you laugh. Oh. Yeah, I'm down with that. Since you have the most, um, you know, like snobbishness about the kind of comedy you would enjoy. <laughs> I just got a point. Uh, I feel like I said that. Yeah, but he's on your team. Snobbishness. What? How did he get on my team? I thought we were just going to side up here. Yeah, I, I totally thought. I assumed oh. I was on your team. I thought I was just the one that's being being told jokes to and that's it. Oh, oh, I, I didn't realize. Oh, it's everybody versus you. I, that's the way you just made it sound. Well, yeah, but I didn't know how you were <laughs> defining those points like if we're trying to make you laugh mm. you don't get points for justin being dumb like i'm only, pretty sure i do only we get points oh because you don't tell jokes i could you could would you be willing to nah i didn't think so, <laughs> I think so. which is why this is called make dave laugh oh see i've already thought all this through brian can we get a graphic of <laughs> make dave laugh yeah. make dave laugh and just like the most stoic like mm-mm -mm. I ain't laughing kind of face. Yeah. No, not that face. Give him, give him another one. And then basically, you no, know, no, no, look at the camera. One. There you go. And then we just take turns, you know, <laughs> like I tell a joke, uh -huh. you hate it. You right. Know? Justin tells a joke. Mm. It's terrible. Okay. Nikki you know? tells a joke. So I'm just the joke. judge and y'all are the contestants. And yeah. Each year. Okay. Yeah, we can do it. Who wants to start? Only you. Oh, no. Only you're we the only one who can lose. We are not prepared for oh, this. Oh, we're, we're totally Now right. you have to be prepared? We have like 15 minutes left in the show. Oh, no. We got like 25. Oh. Yeah. yeah either way, not prepared. No, you're like oh, human beings, right? You don't just have a pocket full of jokes for any random scenario. Mm -hmm. I assumed you were prepared to do Only this. You a pocket full of sunshine. I, I brought it up because it was something that I was considering. Oh, okay. Are you prepared to shave and weigh? That got brought up. Well, that's going to be at the Talking Box Olympics. When? Yes, it is. What's the date? Uh, it's going to be in the summer, we decided. We haven't put, put a full date on it. You're not going to shave anything. What's the difference between a millionaire and a homeless man on a unicycle? I don't know. A tire. All right. <laughs> that, was, that was the worst pun ever. <laughs> <laughs> I hit him with a dad joke. I got to start small. You know what I mean? You got to see where he's at. All right, moving on. I liked it. I'm sure you did. I did. I heard you nose laughing over there. <laughs> yeah. So that's a thing. So you want to do that on another podcast? You want to do that like a separate video thing? A separate video. Thing. Okay, we can do that. Oh yeah, we can set that up. Because you know, I've been trying set to think of something that we could do with our current our current sound setup. setup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything that I come up with is always like on the go or on the right. move. Let's go like, in the woods. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's let's film something fun. Like, yeah. Okay, as long as it's at this you know five by six square. <laughs> 
it's probably bigger than that. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But apparently, it looks bigger on TV or whatever. From what, what I've been told, the what, studio. The studio. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a good size. Yeah. It's going to feel even bigger once we get the couch. Right. No, it'll, that, it'll that, definitely feel smaller. Yeah, if we put a couch in here. No, but we would get rid of the table. Yeah. Oh. Where are the microphones? They would be clipped to us. Oh, we're upgrading. Yeah. More than just yeah. a couch. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. That hadn't been I said sense. when. You know, it's not there yet. Tomorrow. Yeah. No, not tomorrow. Anyway, maybe next week. But we'll I'd like to get week. into advertising. Yeah. I know we did some improv commercials uh, at one point, and some of them were kind of funny. Um, yeah, they weren't bad. Uh, no, all were bad. Justin's little chicanery thing was fun. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's I would. The chicanery. I would like to revisit, like failing, uh, commercials. Like commercials that we've seen mm. that are just awful that make you cringe when you're watching them and you're like, somebody paid for this. And then somebody else said, all right, <laughs> I guess we paid for it. Yeah. Go ahead and run it. Like several hands got put onto this thing. And then like we see it at home and we're like, I would, I'll never buy this product. Right. Your commercial was so bad that I refuse to buy your product now. Instead, we'll just come up with a competing business. Yeah. We just we see these awful commercials, and mm. then we just come up with better out-of-the-box type of ideas. Right. You know, like um, like a Energizer Bunny commercial where, like, it's the apocalypse, and he's still going. Yeah. And, like, every, there's just bones everywhere, and he's got, like, his one ear is on fire, and he's... You just knock, knock the shit off of the table. I mean, God that shouldn't it. be there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's there that. Whose was it? That's not where that goes. Was it yours? No. The no. synthesizer oh. bunny. It, it was empty. Go. So, they're apparently still making... I didn't know. They're, they're still making Energizer Bunny commercials. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw one there. yesterday. Mm-hmm. I thought they quit. I thought they got away from that. No, they keep going. Apparently yeah, they going. keep going. going yeah. And going. Like their marketing campaign. Correct. Bunny on fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so what are you doing this weekend? Uh, probably going back to the pool. Yeah? Yeah. I spent all last weekend at the pool. At the pool. Where's the pool? Had me a good time. Uh, pretty much anywhere there is like a like a hole filled with concrete. You're not going to a specific pool. You're just avoiding heat and getting in water. I mean, there. I could tell you, but you would just pretend like you knew where okay. I was talking. Okay, I didn't about. know if you were going to like a community pool. Oh or... no, no, it's like a neighborhood pool. Okay, like yeah. I'm not even supposed to be there. Uh, I don't live in that neighborhood. <laughs> I assume you know somebody that does. Though. That's why he's trying to keep no. it on the down low here. You show up like I'm at the pool. Yeah, I live here. Yeah, I live in four G. I've talked about confidence before, right? Yeah, yeah. How you can just do whatever you want mm-hmm. with it. Yeah. You can go to the pool. <laughs> what are they going to do? Kick you out? What are They're they not coming to do? Out Ask you a bunch of questions? I'll pee in that pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I either stay in this pool or no one gets in this pool. <laughs> I can make your life really gross very quickly. Now, when you when you go, like some people say that, that, you know, I was at the pool and they're just like there to lay out. But you go to get in the water, right? I like the whole thing. Yeah. The shebang. The whole shebang. Mm-hmm. Do you wait 30 minutes after you eat? Very rarely. Very, very rarely living dangerously i do <laughs> i feel like that's kind of a lowest common denominator thing like i i digest very quickly so like 30 minutes i'll be hungry again <laughs> that's, that's true <laughs> like what the shit like i had a hot dog i had to wait 30 minutes now i'm gonna get some chips and a soda because like i had to wait all this time yeah. you never get in that pool yeah if, you, if you're gonna wait 30 minutes you're never getting that pool. exactly and you know you can't eat chips when you got pool hands. No, you don't want to do that. Uh-uh. You might as well invade that bag before you get <laughs> in the pool. I used to hate it as a kid. I'd have to wait 30 minutes after I ate. Mm. And like without fail, you finish eating, you get in the pool, you got like two minutes, and then <laughs> adult swim. You're like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, adult swim. That was the worst. The boon of every person's child. I had I to deal with that once. At uh, I used to go swimming at the Y in the town where I grew up. The YMCA. And, yeah, it's fun to say there, apparently. The Young Men's Christian Association? That's what it stands for, yeah. They're very exclusionary. Exclusionary. Uh, Exclusive. Exclusive? No. 
exclusivity. Exclusionary. No, exclusionary. They exclude a lot of people. Exclus- exclusionary. If, if you're old, if you're a woman, if you're a Muslim, none of that's true anymore. Yeah. They actually have old Muslim women there now. But <laughs> in the past, <laughs> it was Young Men's Christian Association. Right. That's what it originally stood for, and that's what they dealt with. And now they're like, yeah, whoever. I yeah. guess I've anybody been that's willing to pay for the pool fee. Yeah, come on down. I remember, like that. I was there a lot when I was growing up. My parents would have me go there after school, and it was actually really cool. Like it was enormous for one thing. A huge building. They had like several floors. They had indoor and outdoor facilities, like a basketball court. Like two. They had indoor basketball court, outdoor basketball court, tennis courts. Um, there was a big game room in what they called the cave, which was like. Uh, a cave. They had arcade games. They had they had pool. They had bumper pool. They had uh, shuffleboard, like the the old you know, kind of indoor shuffleboard thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I spent many many an afternoon there. And then and then I went through like swimming lessons there at the Y and all that stuff. And then looking back, I'm like, wow. My parents would leave me there for like. A long time, like I get out of school at like what two thirty. Typically, school gets out. I was there until like eight o'clock at night, and my mom was a teacher, so it's not like she had other shit going on. Like she, she just didn't want to deal with me for several hours a day. Apparently, I mean that sounds fair. Now, was this back in your your tiny swamp town? Yep. Okay, so like probably there were a lot of other kids there too. Like yeah, uh, there was. I don't know, maybe like twenty of us that were typically there. Most nights or afternoons, whatever. But yeah, like I, I had a good time. I'm not saying I didn't have a good time or anything. I just looking back, I'm like, wow, my parents wanted me out of the house. Get them gone. So. Sounded a little bit like Owen Wilson when you said, wow. 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 Uh, no, I, I, uh, I, was a, I was a <laughs> soda TV baby. Yeah. Like, like. Here's a soda, here's a TV. Shut here's the a, hell up. Yeah, here's a soda, <laughs> here's a TV. Uh, let, uh, let them entertain you. Yeah. And and the fact that I think that Cable Guy is a delightful romance and not a dark comedy <laughs> might say a lot about me. But uh. once I hit middle school, though, that wasn't a thing anymore. Going to the Y wasn't. A thing. I don't know if they still did it, and I just wasn't a part of it. Maybe I was too old at that point. But it was like like first through fifth grade. That's when I was there, and then stopped. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of had a little I mean we weren't sheltered we got to do basically what we wanted mm. the only thing was if we got in trouble we uh we had to sit at the dining room table for three hours and study oh yeah no TV no fiction books only textbooks and paper and homework oh man for three hours the bane of all children oh it was misery I love that shit well it was misery because uh we weren't allowed to get up from the table to do anything like, like bathroom or anything? Like that was punishment. You, <laughs> you had three hours to sit at that table. When you were done, that's when you got to move. Oh man. Mm. But that kind of regiment would be great for Jason. He would have loved it. Yeah, yeah. I mean I used to I mean not the whole not going to the bathroom thing. That's kinda of fucked up to <laughs> make a kid do. Like I didn't like oh, that. You get one shit your pants a month, okay? As <laughs> you take adult, it to the table. As an adult, I feel like as a, as an adolescent, it should be more. But um, but in actuality, it's much much less. It is. It's way <laughs> less. If you shit your pants as as an adolescent of any kind, uh, your parents are not going to be thrilled like, with you. Like what age should should kids stop needing a hall pass to take a dump in school? <laughs> Like, at what age yeah. should a human being not have to ask permission? I hated that in school. To evacuate yeah. themselves. Like, at what age are you an old enough motherfucker that you can pee by yourself? Now, see, and, and that's one of the interesting things about my position where, where I work at day job is that uh, you still get, I'm, 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 I'm a boss, so I still get people come and ask me if they can use the restroom. And <laughs> I have to explain to people, like, I don't need you to ask to use the restroom. Um, but if you're going to be in there, I need to know where you're at. That's about it. Because I'm not going to ever tell you no. Right. No, You have to hold it. I have backup depends in the office, but you're not going anywhere. Do you really? No. No. Oh. No, I don't. You should get some. Just they, they, are, they have full autonomy <laughs> to use the bathroom. Yeah. 
I just uh, I, I don't want to go looking for them in the right. bathroom. Now is that a, is that a company policy or or you policy? That's with a the me depends. policy <laughs> with the depends. Now I understand what you're saying about the like. You know when they don't have to use a hall pass and stuff. However, I also understand the importance of having it because it. I remember in my classrooms there was there was one to two hall passes, and basically the way I look at it is that's to keep kids from just being like, "I'm going to the bathroom," and the next kid, "Yeah, I'm going to the bathroom too," and like 18 kids just like getting up and going to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And then the next want. thing you know, you have high school bathroom orgies going yep. on left and yep. right. Everybody's smoking crack in the gym, yep. or just not being in class. Is, is more the point of it. But like, really, like, you're a teacher. I feel like once you get to two, to three, to four, by the time you're at 18, you have fucking failed <laughs> as a teacher. Oh, okay? Yeah. If you let 18 students walk Johnny's out of the door. Johnny's not back yet. You don't understand. I'm going to shit my pants. <laughs> you get one a month. All right. <laughs> That's, Do you want to take it today? Uh, I mean, it's the you, first. Uh, <laughs> You can either wait for he gets back, or you can go ahead and use that one shit. It's up to you. <laughs> That's how the teacher gets fired <laughs> with that conversation. Oh, man. So I'm just saying that, like, I get the extreme example that everyone can create to show me how it could get out of hand. Mm. But I feel that that very rarely occurs. And, like, yes, there are yeah, going to be... Yeah, it very rarely occurs because there are all passes. Well, yeah, but as a bad kid who used good grades and, you know nepotism to get through high school like i could still ask for a hall pass and then go fuck around and make laps and stuff like all i'm doing is preventing anybody else from going to the bathroom yep so like it doesn't stop the bad kids from acting out like it just stops stops the good kids from peeing on it it stops more bad kids from acting out ah more bad If, if one kid's out there being a dick that's acceptable. We can deal with that situation. If four bad kids are out there being a dick, that's an issue. I mean, I'll go visit other teachers and stuff. <laughs> like, I'll go sit on other classes <laughs> while I have a hall pass from one lady. I didn't want to learn in that one. I want to learn what you got to say. What do you have? She's boring. <laughs> Teach me more about American English. <laughs> I don't know how to speak that good, so... No, this guy is the dumbest. <laughs> as dumb as it can get. As dumb as it can get. Dumb as it can get. <laughs> Uh, what was, what was your after school stuff like? Did you have after school? Uh, when I was younger, I lived on a military base, so okay. we had very similar to the Y. We had the rec center where we okay, could yeah. do swimming and stuff like that. I got into jujitsu at a somewhat early age. Yeah, so that was always. What's I got into martial arts back in sixth grade. Yeah, what sixth, kind of martial arts? Tong Sudo. Uh, it's it's uh like it's essentially the Korean version of Taekwondo, but it's more defensive than offensive. Okay. Um, I did that for like five years. Got a first degree black belt. Almost hit second degree, but my my grades were dropping, so my parents made me stop. That's Do fair. you still retain any of that? Do you practice? I it? I don't practice it. I remember most of it. You know, like the moves and stuff. All right, so we're going to do a demonstration video. Okay, where I just kick people in the face? Yeah, how do you spell it? Mm -hmm. We're Uh, just going to throw a lot of watermelons up in the air. All right, what's it called? Fruit Ninja. (laughs) Fruit Ninja. I'm just going to need you to Fruit Ninja. T-A-N-G. Tong? Yeah, you're you're already spelling it wrong. That's Tang, man. There you go. (laughs) S-O-O-D-O. He just drinks like 14 cups of Tang. Tang Sudo. Tang Sudo. Yep. That's what it was. Mm. All right, so Dave's going to do a tongue sudo <laughs> I did demonstration. one year of American karate, yeah. um, but I was abnormally tall, mm-hmm. uh, even as a child, and so I had to fight the instructor the entire year. <laughs> And, you had an unfair um, advantage over the That's young not kids. karate and training. It, that's child abuse. And it didn't seem <laughs> fair. It didn't seem fair at all. Because, like, there was no, like, all right, I'm going to let him win this time. No. no he wasn't going to take your the mom's prize. That's not how much hard $30 work. a month for a man to beat the shit out of her kid. <laughs> yeah, that's kind like, of I love it. Everybody else is fighting their peer group. I'm fighting a 35-year-old, like, <laughs> martial arts instructor. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I would land a hit and celebrate. <laughs> Like, he didn't see that one coming, ha, 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 and then he would just floor me. <laughs> okay, like, did it, oh. yay. Like, yeah, that was a good shot. It was a good shot. Now I'm going to kick the crap out of you just so that we know who the Alpha Prime is. Right. 
I did Rex Quando. Similar. I was I wasn't like the youngest one in the class, but as I progressed, a lot of the kids that I had had been in class with dropped off. And so I just started going to the adult classes that were later at night, like the the eight o'clock classes and stuff. And so I was usually the youngest one in those classes, but I would like I could hold my own, I guess. Um mm-hmm. Because it turns out a lot of those older guys who are in those classes aren't that fit. And so... A lot of times they're just looking for like a smaller exercise yeah. regiment, you know, that'll also give them a little bit of defensive advantage. And it, but, and it works, too. I was in I was in real good shape when I was, when I was younger, like, because of that. And then uh, I didn't really exercise from then until now. So and tomorrow as well. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let's not leave out tomorrow. So, so like eighteen years of of uh, doing nothing has uh, taken its toll on my body a little yeah, bit, hasn't it? And yet you're still out there keeping the cool, and yeah. intimidating motherfuckers. Yep, three <laughs> inches tall. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, it looks like we're about out of time. But uh, just I guess uh, yeah. to keep with the theme of uh, of fun little things, mm-hmm. fun little news stories. Um, Rick and Morty. Right, yeah. We all know Rick and Morty, right? We Great love show. Rick and Morty. Lick and Rick and Morty, we love Lick and yeah. Rick. Lick and, and Rick Morty. <laughs> uh, so uh, there was this, uh, this, this huge thing that they caused not too long ago when they were talking about the old Szechuan sauce at McDonald's mm-hmm. uh, that came out as a promotion for the Disney movie Mulan. Oh, okay. Uh, and I it didn't was, know that. It was mentioned in one of the episodes. And after they mentioned it, there became this huge, like, outcry and this outpouring for Bring Back Szechuan Sauce. Okay. Not uh, that anybody even remembers it. It's <laughs> just, it's pop culture it's now. It's pop right. culture, so they Bring want, Back the Sauce that we can't remember what it tastes like, if it existed. If it existed. It was horrible. <laughs> so. <laughs> it was pretty bad. So there, uh, just a few days ago, I saw this online. Uh, In your bar- microphone, please. Uh, Justin Roiland, who is uh, one of the creators of yeah. Rick and Morty. And the voice uh, of both. Yeah, he got a package in. Mm-hmm. He got a package from McDonald's. On the outside, it says Dimension C1998M. And when you read it, it uh, I- I'm going to uh, just give you the basic rundown. You'll have to go on and find this yourself. But essentially what it says is that McDonald's traveled back in time uh, to a dimension... There were, it was always 1998, uh, and they have procured some Szechuan sauce, and they sent him a gallon bottle <laughs> of Szechuan sauce. Right. And it, 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 they go into, like, painstaking detail about tying it into Rick and Morty. Yeah. And it's really, really fun and cool, and I think it means we're all going to get Szechuan sauce soon. If we go to McDonald's. If we go to McDonald's. Right. Uh, I, actually, I think it's just really funny how like that social media outcry can have a family friendly company like McDonald's mm-hmm. create this right. for such a non family show, <laughs> Rick and Morty. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Now the funny thing, I've made a mention it before on the show that I don't like McDonald's. Like I have boycotted McDonald's for several years, mm-hmm. and and it used to be not like, a sponsor. I didn't like most of their foods, but I did like their nuggets, and I stopped eating their nuggets because they got rid of the hot mustard sauce that they have. Or that they had that was that was, I really enjoyed. That um, made the nuggets more bearable. Yes, um, not that the nuggets were necessarily bad, but like I wanted that dipping. That was my dipping sauce. That's what I wanted to dip my nuggets in. Damn it! And uh, I happened to be with a friend yesterday driving around, and she wanted to go to to McDonald's. I was like, fine, we'll go to McDonald's. Whatever, I don't care. I'm not getting anything from there. They brought back hot mustard. So you had to get some. Nuggets. I mu- I didn't. But you might. But I might have to start going back to my toes <laughs> getting these nuggets. <laughs> or you could just go in mm-hmm. and be like, oh, hey, I just got some nuggets. Uh, could I get a couple of hot mustards? Grab the hot mustards and then go get nuggets from a place you really like. Yeah, yeah I could do that. True. I go to Burger that's King and get their nuggets. I realize now that both of the quirky stories that I've had are mm-hmm. condiment-based, so I'm not <laughs> sure if I should stick with it yeah. with this theme and just keep trying to find weird condiment stories. Right. Um but, uh, Pickle flavored mayonnaise. Have you heard about this? Guys? <laughs> have you heard about this, gang? No. <laughs> but uh, we have a new story today. Frank's hot sauce. Old lady puts that shit on everything. <laughs> I like it. I haven't heard that one. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that shit on everything. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that yeah, that brings us pretty close to the end. What'd pretty, you learn today? Pretty close. What did I learn today? Mm. I learned that you had boycotted McDonald's. You know, and, and no, I did not. I figured oh. you we just had an aversion like to it. Episode two or did something. Did we? 
We probably did. I mean, we, we <laughs> mentioned that McDonald's was the worst fast food restaurant, I think. Well, I didn't realize you had gone quite full out boycott. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't love McDonald's, but unfortunately I do eat it. No, <laughs> uh, no, not me. What did I learn today? Yeah, what did you, uh, yeah, you learn? I learned that I've got a fan. <laughs> I learned that somebody out there has has singled me out of the group <laughs> and respects and thinks very highly of me. Yeah. And I appreciate And your pink shirt. I appreciate that person. Yeah. And his eight hundred followers. I hope he could just spare a <laughs> few of those followers for us and you can make an episode about just coming on here and shit talking me for an hour. <laughs> we'll let you do it. Yeah. We're this not scared. Is a legitimate proposition. Please comment below if you'd like this to happen. Yeah, because we will on, make this happen. Oh, yeah. You can you can sit right here. I'll actually just post up where the talkie bot is, and y'all can all just bash me <laughs> like a like a pumpkin head, like a roast. It is becoming more. We're and gonna more do a Jason roast <laughs> by the second. Yeah, Let's I do actually it. I love roasts. Yeah, yeah. I love a good roast, and if this guy isn't bringing good game, I'm gonna deflate it. I mean, we've seen his comment. That's a plus stuff. I'd like to think it'll continue. <laughs> So please. Yeah. Well, Mickey, what'd you learn today? Oh shit! You didn't. You didn't. The pressure. I uh, tried to buy you some time. I know. I know. I was. I was <laughs> going for it. Uh, I learned that Jason's fan has no fashion taste. That's a fabulous shirt, sir. He didn't say anything bad about the shirt. He just said that he was wearing it. Nope. He was true. just using it as an identifier. He just used it as an identifier. I felt like he was very aggressive toward the shirt. Yeah, that could be it. And that, like, Jason's an asshole. He called it what? But Sambo? that shirt, though. Uh, yeah, yeah there's nothing Sambo. wrong with that shirt. I've never heard of that term, though. Now, uh, there's something that I think all of our audience might not have known about today that I think they should take note of, mm -hmm. and that is the one should a month rule. I'm telling oh, yeah. you, you need to take advantage of this if you haven't already. Yeah, that's something that the audience may have learned today. It, sh it should be. Yeah. If they and if you go on vacation it, and you're drunk, you get as many shits as you want in your pants. I mean, you don't have to be drunk. You, you just have to be drinking. Oh, it's, it's, it's just, you just have to be drinking. I mean, it's really just about the vacation. We yeah. don't want to have to limit someone's bowel movements while they are taking a break from the world. That's yeah. true. So, you know, when you're out there in the real world and no you have one to will go tax to work my BMs. and you have to tr go and sit in the traffic and stuff like that, one a month. Uh -huh. One a month is plenty. And, you know, you don't have to use it. Nope. But, but every now It's not and even then, necessarily recommended that you do. It's, it's just like if you don't, you it's a gold can. star on planning. Yeah. If you get a gold star on planning for the month, if you don't have to use that one shit, if you have to use it, well, then kind of A minus. <laughs> <laughs> you still had a great month otherwise. What if you're stuck in month. traffic? Do you hang it out the window or do you just poop in the back seat? <laughs> Depends I'm on sorry. how slow the traffic is. <laughs> uh, uh, like, you, you get the nobody manual, wants to answer. You like, get the manual out of the glove box and you line your seat with it. You go in your drawers, man. <laughs> Like, yep. that is all there is to it. You keep that one page that tells you what the lights on your dashboard are That's about. all you need. You need to make sure you have that one at all times shit-free. Everything, everything, else everything else is just to scotch guard your seat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, toilet humor. Thank you, Jason. No problem. Thanks, everybody. So if you're ever in traffic and you see someone rolling down all four windows at once. You know what's up. <laughs> they're Dave, using their one. Yeah. <laughs> what did you learn? Uh, I learned that we're going to make a video... Where people tell me jokes and I try not to laugh at them. Oh, this right. is gonna be so How's great. How's your toe? Uh, my toe is actually doing very well. Um, in case you didn't see a previous episode, I broke my toe a couple weeks back, and it's fine. It doesn't hurt at all anymore. Um, it's still I still have all ten. So. Have you lost any feeling in it? Mm -mm. No. It's not uh, before. Even though it didn't really hurt, I still like. I, is it like I had a sensation in it? Like. <laughs> Not necessarily pain, but like I was aware of the toe, you know? Now I don't really have that. Now it's just oh, another. Oh, time is up. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's enough toe talk. I didn't realize. <laughs> time has gotten away. I, just, I looked at the clock seconds ago. Right. And I didn't feel like, but now we are. Yeah, we I went on a long time about that talk here. Gone Ooh. over. I'm sorry, everybody. Anyway. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great night. God bless. Good you. night, everybody. Bye. I hope they're good, guys. Ha, 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 ha.